Welcome to the Wallace Show Aftercast, those things we did not get to during the course of the show today. As you might have noticed, if you've already listened to the regular podcast, the gang is all here. Betty Rock is back, (laughs) uh, took a day off, and uh, celebrated her friend's birthday. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Was it? Like yeah. like with like crazy fun? Like did you no. guys get crazy? No, no yeah. we ran errands. <laughs> we got puzzles. We got puzzles. <laughs> Watched a few crime shows. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. How old is Nick Nack now? She's thirty eight. Ah, okay. So you guys are the same age for a little bit, and yeah, then she yeah, for a okay. little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Nick Nack is uh, Betty Rock's roommate and we were, our um, best friend. This actually led to um, a good conversation that we had because she was asking me. She said, "How do you deal with?" getting older. Oh, that's a good question, yeah. And um, I told her one of the things that helps me, because I think... Having a friend that's older. You. you know? <laughs> no, didn't say that. But I did say, I think it's very important to be thankful, because sure. um, I have a, a girl that I went to high school with, grew up with, pretty much. Um, she's a year younger than me. But she has four kids, got married, had four kids, and her husband died at 35 from lung cancer, and he never smoked a day in his life. What? So I just think about those people that I know or I know through other people and that they would have done anything to make it to my age. Mm -hmm. And that makes me thankful. Sure. Because, I mean, you could sit in, oh, I'm getting older, and uh, Mm -hmm. you know, but there are people that didn't even get the chance and would have loved to. Absolutely. I find like getting older, like I don't get wigged out about birthdays. I think I'm getting more frustrated that I'm starting to come to terms with my own mortality at only 53. And I know they're like, 50 is the new 30. That's a lie. Uh, 50 hurts. <laughs> and like my body, and, and, and granted, now I have not taken the best care of myself, but like I'm not, it's not like I'm not active. I, I uh, mountain bike and I, you know, play pickleball and I I do things. And injure yourself. Uh, yeah. And I, I mean, I'll still go out and I'll work. I'm rebuilding a deck, you know, like, so I'm not afraid of hard work and, and, and physical activity, but my body is not able to do what it used to do when mm-hmm. I was younger. And that frustrates me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, my grandfather died of Parkinson's. And his mind was sharp all the way to the end, but he was completely frustrated because his body gave out on him. And that is what my, like my fear of growing older is, is that I'll still be mentally fine ish and, uh, (laughs) you know, wanting to do things or or my, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Like my my spirit's willing, but my body just cannot do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think for the first time in my life, I'm having those thoughts and it's really frustrating me because I'm like 53 is not crazy old. Mm -hmm. Uh, it ain't young, but it's not crazy old. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, yeah, so I wrestle through that. Yeah. I think a part of it that plays in mine and Nick Nack's situation is that we aren't in a phase of life that the world tells us we should be in. Right. Like at our age, we should be driving a minivan full of three kids, sure. you know, and happily married. But that hasn't happened for us. Mm. And so I think that plays a part in as you get older, you're like, I still am not in that phase of life, right, you know. Right. But when you change, but you your, can't rush it, right? And you don't, wouldn't want to because then you end you're going to end up on Dateline. Y- yeah, <laughs> or or you end up like you you felt like I just have to do this, and you settle for somebody. You've got all this way not settling, and then you settle, and then that person ends up being somebody that's not good for you, and they bring badness into your life. That that's worse. Or if you base your quality of life on another person, sure. you are setting yourself up for failure because that person is a hot, stinking mess. Yeah. I'm a hot, stinking mess. Right. So I know that whoever wants to hitch their wagon to mine, they're not getting the best. Sure. Oh, know? no, absolutely. <laughs> but the same not working be, with the A-team but, here. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, what I'm saying is, is that it's the same for everybody. Right. We're all human. We're all sinners. There's nothing perfect about us. So if we are waiting to find the... The fulfillment that is lo- that you can find in life by getting married, right? Well, that's just crazy. Well, I think too. Like, I mean, I've known you for so long, and I've watched you go up and down with this mental process inside of this. Uh-huh. And you're definitely the healthiest you've ever been with regards to this, which is great. And it's yeah. not easy to get there. Like, no. I commend you for that because you resist the pressure to just acquiesce and and settle. And at the same time, I'm sure there's still an internal clock too on your head yeah. that you're mindful of, but you're keeping that at bay. Well, and also. Also, too, I think there's a lot of factors that play into that. Like, for instance, 
um, I know some people that have parents that don't um, support them. Right. If they're still single at right. my age, like they're like, what's wrong with you? You didn't right. try hard enough. Maybe you should do this instead. My parents have never been that way with me. Um, they've always been like, if you're happy, we're happy. And that takes a load off of my shoulders. That's a big thing. Tomlin didn't get married. Chris Tomlin didn't get married till he was late 30s, maybe even early 40s. 40s, yeah, I think. I have no idea. Yeah, like but he the, he just hadn't he he was working on his career and stuff yeah. and hadn't found the right person. But then also too another factor that really helps is finding people that you in actually enjoy doing things with, living life with, and are in the same boat as you, sure. and they're not in any rush to leave. Right, they're, they have found contentment in who they are as a person. That is the healthiest well, place to be. I would say too, like I've seen you the most content you've ever been in this place with this and at peace with it. And I think it comes from what you were saying earlier about being thankful. Like when you live in an attitude of gratitude and you're thankful for what you do have, mm-hmm. it does it does make your place in life, whatever that place is, more enjoyable. Oh you know? yeah, and that can go for anything. In Absolutely, life. not just singleness, but no. anything. No, no, no. Like like if you when you find that place, if you're constantly trying to find happiness through buying things, you know, you're mm-hmm. never going to satisfy that need. But when you become content Content with what you have, and you're thankful for what you have. There's a peace and a joy that comes with that when you're not having to buy the next bobble, you know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, it could be for a lot of different things. But well, there you go. That was good. I like that. Uh, let me see. The, oh, this was a crazy story. Uh, social media is a disaster in a lot of ways, uh, you know. But it it's covered under our right of freedom of speech. And that that's why we protect it. This right here, this story, is why we protect it. Even if we don't like what's being said all the time, it's still important to protect. You mm-hmm. know, if it doesn't agree with you, okay, fine. But in uh, Dubai, there was a, uh, a woman, a Saudi a court, sentenced a woman to 45 years in prison Whoa. for allegedly damaging the country through her social media posts. Wow. They did not like what she had to say. Lot, that gives people a lot of power. Yes, it's fear-based. It, it's controlling. That's why, again, you can hate people's things that they say online, but that's why it's still important to protect their right to say it, because then it could be you're, you're protecting your own right to say what you believe as well. Mm-hmm. Now, we have to give people the even space, and we always judge everybody's stuff, uh, but we have that freedom of speech. Can you imagine making a post about like the government, like the things that we say about Trump or about Biden, you know, like and that uh, landing you 45 years in prison? There'd be a lot of people in prison. Oh, yeah. We, we, we Half the country would be in prison, which might not be bad. Yeah, probably me too. Yeah, Uh, but yeah. So yeah, she was uh, accused of disrupting the cohesion of society and destabilizing the social fabric. Woo. Yeah, and like that's not even quantifiable. Like you can't even like okay, how? Tell me how. Tell me how many people I affected. Well, we can't. We're just gonna put you in prison. Like again, talk about being thankful. This is one of those things. Is as messed up as our world is, and as divisive as our uh, country can be sometimes. And, and as much as you want to be frustrated with it, these are the moments where you have to go back to our thankful conversation. And go look, it ain't perfect. It's broken. It's messed up. I get it. But man, I'm thankful for mm-hmm. it. I'm way thankful that I have. Have, that I live here and I'm not having to worry about that kind of oppression. I, I have a friend that she lives in China and they just got back to China. They had to do 14 day quarantine separated in half as the family couldn't even quarantine together separated in half. They waited in line the other day for uh, another series of tests uh, for COVID. They're still going crazy over COVID over there. So she's in Shanghai. And so uh, she waited in line, got her kids tested, like one of these lines that goes all the way around the building, you wait for hours. And then kids got tested, they got their results. And now her kids to go to school, this was just to go to school. Her kids are being COVID tested every day. Uh, in school now, wow. and if the, if they come back positive, they take the kid immediately, and the kid goes off to a place, and you do not see your kid. Like that's crazy town. Yeah. And and my and my wife asked her, said, "Well, how many cases do you have?" And she said, "The last I heard, we had fifty. Wow, fifty cases in yeah. a city of thirty-two million. Wow. 
and that's the lockdown that they're on. That's microscopic. Yes. Like, I am I mean, we went a little nuts, obviously, but we didn't swing to that stage. So, again, thankful. So grateful to be here, man. Like, yeah. I, I love the USA. I'm Lee Greenwood <laughs> all of a sudden. God bless <laughs> the USA. Yeah, like, she didn't want to go back, and uh, but her husband works there. And and even he now has kind of run his course with it, but they they're still under contract, and he had to go back. But I think they're going to move back here because she said the anxiety over there is just palpable about mm. everything. Mm. And so yeah, just be thankful. Uh, what do you got, Lady Rock? Well, the Wall Street Journal they came out with this article that talks about things that used to be free. You know, I am glad that you renewed your subscription to the Wall Street I Journal. Did. You, you know, find more I, good I, stuff. I feel like it has really helped me. <laughs> How's your portfolio doing? Yeah. Pretty good? Uh, it's lackluster. Um, <laughs> but anyways, they, they did this article that talked about things that used to be free, but now we're getting charged for them. So maybe if you find your grandparents being angry, or you find a Wally in your life yeah. being like, I can't believe yeah. ah, I'm I've shaking their life. fist, yeah. maybe this is the reason why. So, a couple of the things that used to be free, and now we're having to pay extra, is choosing where to sit on an yes. airplane. Yes. So, if you want to make sure you, you don't get stuck with a middle seat, or in the way back, mm-hmm. it will cost you. Oh. So, I guess it was, it's It's free. always been free until It's recently. free to get a seat. Right. But then to choose it, right? But then to, to choose, choose the one it, you specifically cost. want. Because what they decided to do was charge you for everything. They upcharge everything yeah. on airlines. So before, Gavin probably doesn't even remember these days, before you would buy a ticket and the first thing you did was pick your seat and it didn't cost you anything. Now you buy your ticket and they go, okay, do you want to pick your seat? Uh, you have to pay this much. Do you want a seat that actually doesn't jab you in the back and gives you a slight knee room? You have to pay this much. Yeah. And like every it time just you adds turn around, up. yeah, it's crazy. Oh, you want us to actually pick your luggage up and carry it somewhere for you with you, uh, you have to pay this much. Like, we, yeah. luggage used to be free. Luggage, you didn't get charged. Like, Gravin looks confused. You you, you didn't pay <laughs> for luggage. That doesn't sound real. No, I know. It, you didn't pay for luggage. You got two bags and it was free. It's great. And then I think Delta was one of the first ones to start charging for it. And then the floodgates open. That's why I love flying United, too, because it, it saves you money. Bag fees, for example, 35 bucks. All right. So if you are traveling with somebody, so take my wife and I, we're going away. So we just spent $400 on tickets. All right. So now if we were flying Delta and we didn't have the credit card or status, it would be another $70 Eesh. each way. So another $140. On top of that, so now you're at 540 just to do what they used to do for free. It's crazy. I get it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Another one is using the pool at the hotel. So it used to just come with having a hotel room, I suppose. But now they've had it where if you want early check-in fees, that's going to cost you. If you want access to a lounge chair at the pool, that's going to cost you. Is that really a thing? I didn't know that. I just figured it's got a pool. Just go. Stayed at a hotel with a pool because as a kid that was like legendary. Yeah, like if a hotel had a pool. You were living the good life. We took my daughter uh, for one of her birthdays, like t- eleven, probably her eleven year old birthday, and we did a hotel party. And so her, uh, she had like her little friends, and they could uh, stay at this hotel, and they got their own room, and they got to bounce on the bed and everything. <laughs> and uh, and but the pool that they had was awesome. It was an indoor outdoor pool, nice. so half of the pool was outdoor and that. half was indoor. And you had to cool. swim under a wall. Mm. Like I'm like I wanted to do that. Like this is great, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't get to do it because it costs more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I already so I'm already paying it off. Maybe for your 55th birthday. Yeah, an indoor outdoor pool. That'd be great. Uh, I know this is gonna make us all. All livid. Um, they're now doing kitchen appreciation fees. So if you don't pay attention when you get your bill at the end of a meal, yeah, there are oh, some times where yes. they charge you a kitchen appreciation fee, yeah. which is pretty much a tip to the cooks. Right. And it's like, okay, you either pay your cooks better and you're going to raise my price, but don't try to sneak this in. Or B, yeah. you share your tips with the cooks. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's. I mean, that's how you should do it. Like to add an extra charge. I think that came out of COVID, and COVID yeah. was like, hey, everybody's struggling. And I understood it during COVID. Like it should always be optional. But I understood, hey, you know, you want to do 
donate a little extra. You know, these people are working hard so that you can eat while everything else is shut down. 100%. We're back to business as usual. Mm-hmm. Thank the Lord. Another reason to be thankful. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and it's like, all right, you guys need to reel this back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then last, um, seeing a movie on the day it comes out. Used to be just a general ticket fee. Yeah. But now if you want to see it the day it comes out, it usually costs more. Mm. Oh, like an early release. You've mm-hmm. got to pay a, a premium mm-hmm. on it. Interesting. Uh, I'm a list. Yeah, me too. And so, like, I don't pay premiums on anything. I love that. Not with you're not with the peasants. No, goodness (laughs) gracious. They. I'm surprised they don't have our own section uh, in the theater. But whatever. Skybox. I mean, at least one of the theaters um, uh, in Franklin, they have a special concessions line for a list, and you don't have to wait in this long of a line. But sometimes it backfires because sometimes they only have one person working it, Mm. and it can actually take you longer. And then you just Mm. resent all those poor people even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you're like, why should I have to endure this hardship? I paid um, good money for yeah. early access. I do like I do like having a list though because yeah. like we'll go see movies that I'm like, mm, is this gonna be good? Oh, I don't know. And then when it's not good, you're like, okay, that's fine. Like I I saw a movie the other day that I'm like, eh, all right, well I Beast. walked out. No, 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 <laughs> too scary. Um, there is a, gr- a just a grip of scary movies now. Right. So we went to see that movie with. Uh, Twilda, Tilda Swinton, Swinton. Tilda Swanson? Swinton, Swanson. It was that one where the genie is like- Oh, coming. Idris Elba? Yeah. That it, looked really weird and we decided okay. no. Good call on that. Okay. Not good. even worth the free. It was horrible. Okay. It, it looks not, bad. Nothing yeah, good about that movie. Yeah, it didn't even look good to begin no. with. I thought the concept was interesting. Like a modern day, you get three wishes and then her one comment from the trailer of like all these uh, wish stories end in like tragedy. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. I liked, I love the high concept of it, mm-hmm. but the execution of it was atrocious. Atrocious, okay. horrible movie. Thank There's, you for saving yeah, me. Yeah, but it, it looked. There's stupid. nothing redeeming it about too it. Yeah. Artsy. Nothing. Yeah, it yeah. looked like uh, like weird cho- choice of. I don't really care for Tilda as yeah, much. Yeah, and it had some. It had some things that aren't good in it too. Like like uh, you know like yeah. It just yeah, not good. It's okay. Now I that. recently saw the trailer for a movie that I didn't realize it was already out and it's already done at the theater and what? I wanted to see it. It's called Fall or The Fall. Oh, where they kids climb and yeah, they're it's like these teens that are climbing what? up a they're climbing up this like a telephone or not, it's even, not like a telephone an, like pole. a massive like, antenna. Yeah, like an okay. antenna. But they showed at the beginning like she's mountain climbing and then she loses a friend like she falls off the cliff oh, and then okay. she, So now I think she's trying to face her figures again, but yeah. she's climbing up an antenna with a different friend. Okay. And now something goes wrong And they there. can't get down. Yeah. Oh. No, I think they see a storm coming okay. or something, but I I want to see it. But I was talking to Nick Knack about it and then I was like, "Wait a minute, she just really has bad luck." Yeah. <laughs> like if she's going to lose two friends like i wouldn't want to be her friend i'd stop climbing <laughs> yeah i saw i saw a bunch of trailers like if, before this movie and there is just so there are just so many um scary movies coming out right now mm. there is smile which oh that terrifying oh, oh my gosh yeah, yeah no, terrifying no, no. i kind of want to know how there's it goes a, though th- there's another one about a nun uh, oh, I know which one you're yes. talking about. Anything also, with no. a Catholic nun no. in it, you uh-uh. know it's going to be bad. Yep, no. The, Unless it's sis, it's Sister Act, yeah. then just don't <laughs> do it. The vampire one, the invitation, I think it is. Like that looks yeah. scary. Nope. There, there was just so many. I'm like, and it was just one after another. And I was sitting in this movie theater, and it was it was uh, really a bunch of old people uh, <laughs> that went to see this movie that I went to see, <laughs> and and you just kind of hear smatterings of nope. Mm-mm. Nope. And, and I was one of them. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not seeing that. Oh, good times. Do you remember I was talking with someone recently about when you and I went to go see... Um, Cold Pursuit? No, that one was horrible. Uh, it, the first oh, It yeah. movie. And yeah. I, told, I can't believe you guys did that. And yeah. I told we were him, brave. I said, you get three tries at scaring me, yeah. and then that's it. You can't try it anymore. Right. But he ruined all three tries because he actually scared himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what was so great, too, is someone had gone there and gotten one single red balloon and tied it to one of the poles mm, in the so front great. of the 
theater. I was like, so great. That is great. Yeah, that 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 was fun. I don't. I'm not a fan of that movie or the franchise, but yeah, that was fun. That was a good day. And then we went to go see. All three of us went to go see that Invisible Man. Yeah, yeah, I liked that. That was a good it movie. It was good. That yeah. wasn't as like straight up scary as it was suspense, suspenseful, and yeah. like horrifying. If someone actually did that someday. Yeah, I, I like the concept of that. Like, I yeah, I didn't have a problem with that. One. And then Wally wanted to see what was that. St- Stupid oh, one about the island. Fantasy Island. It was so bad. It was really bad. It was so bad. That one was bad. Old, Old was, was bad. bad. Old I, was bad. That was yeah. M. Night Shyamalan. That was like one we did for like your Shyamalan. birthday. Yeah, last it was year. Rough. That was rough. I, I was really hoping that was going to be good, but no. no. I, you can list far more bad movies than good ones now, and the money they spend to make movies, oh, it's it's, it's crazy that someone along the lines doesn't go, "Hey, this is not like uh, the this script is not good. needs more work." Yeah, this like, is like let not me watch. There. Th- now I'm watching it, and it's really not working out. Like for instance, when I saw Beast, I was like, "How does the teen girl yeah. find the wounded man right. in this jungle infested?" Lion infested jungle landscape <laughs> yeah, and gets him back to the car. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Anyways, want to move to birthdays? Yeah. All right. We've got Josh. All of these are from yesterday or the day before. Did y'all do any of them? We did do yesterday. Yeah. On the after. Did you do Josh? No. It might have come in after we did it. Might have. I just, I just didn't okay. See it yesterday. Josh turning one. 17 yesterday, said he loves playing video games and watching movies. Happy birthday, Josh. Josh. Then Kai turning 13, loves dogs. I love that name. Kai? Yeah, there's mm-hmm. this a surfer that I really like, Kai Lenny. Uh, and he he's a big wave surfer. It's just like he's like this, this guy, you're like, oh, that guy's cool. I want to be that guy. Kai's uh, are usually not like accountants. No. Now we have Kai Kai, the record guy that works for Fair Trade Records. We like him too. Uh, Kim wants to wish Kai. Kai, a happy uh, birthday as well. Kimberly, I guess, is Kai's daughter. No. Wait, my daughter. Wait, Kai is a girl. Oh, still great. <laughs> my daughter, still, Kai. Still, yeah, okay. Kai is turning 13. She's addicted to the aftercast. Nice. At times, I have grounded her from your show, <laughs> oh. so she'll do her homework. Okay, Kai, do your homework. Come on, we miss you. Mm. Okay, so here's the question. What is the most embarrassing birthday you ever had? Oh, man. Didn't you get... Nope. There was something nope. bad with yours. Nope. Don't, don't remember. You hurt your hiney. Nope. No. What? That's Gavin. Maybe I'm thinking about Michael Scott. You remember when Michael Scott talks about the bad birthdays he had and he had a bad allergic reaction when he rode the pony? <laughs> so yeah, that's not his me. His mom had to ru- rub some lotion on his bottom while that's, it's that's just <laughs> Yeah, that is way not me. <laughs> <laughs> Something bad happened at one of yours. Uh, yeah, no one showed up. Uh, so, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That what was year was that? I think eight. Uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, I had an August birthday, and so kids like just they don't they can't come, and it's just oh yeah. Bless your heart. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> Still hurts. So sorry. <laughs> I think mine was eight as well. It was at a roller rink, and I was so excited because they had like this huge notebook, and it had all the invitations. Um, and then the different colors you could choose from. And oh, it was just so exciting to choose what color invitations I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I invited every girl in my class. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that it was also the same day of a game that a lot of them were in. Like, so mm-hmm. they, a lot of them played couldn't softball come. and they couldn't come. So only two girls were oh, able to come. Oh, yeah, it's the worst. People. Oh, yeah, and you try to make the best of lot, it. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's, that yes. Rough. I get it. I'm, I'm right there with you. We're both <laughs> tearing up on the inside. <laughs> So, well, you guys are I'm, broken. I'm not tearing up. Oh, you are inside. You're a train wreck. <laughs> Gavin, what about you? All stems back to that day. <laughs> I think that I don't have a, a conscious recollection of it, but I think as a, like a really young kid, toddler esque, I think I got like put in time out on one of my birthdays. Oh, and I can. I feel like there's a picture in a photo book of me crying on my birthday <laughs> that I, I'm sure was embarrassing, but I can't remember it. So. It doesn't scar me like your guys' birthdays do. Wow. Excuse me, Mr. Popular, yeah. who always had someone oh, showing up at his birthday party. Every time. Must be nice. <laughs> Mom and dad are great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I think that's going to do it for our aftercast. And as always, thanks for being a potty.